Oh, it's Steve oh. Mangum, everyone! Yeah. Woo. Come in, come in. It's a bit windy, mate. It's a bit windy. Oh, don't go out there. It's cosy in here. I had really short hair when I left the uh, end of the pier. Can I get you a cup of tea? Uh, a wine, a beer? A beer would be really yeah. good. Yeah. Have you ever been to uh, Southend before? I haven't. No, first time. First time in Southend. Uh, thank yeah. you for being here. I hope you've got an appetite. I've got a very big appetite. Quite a lot yeah. of food today. I've got to say, um, one of the things that really stick in my mind with you was Green Wing. I mean, that was a total game changer, yeah. that show. We filmed it in a real hospital. I mean, they didn't shut the hospital down or anything. We were out amongst the public. We were allowed to get involved in the writing. We were helped to create our characters. Really? We'd shoot a bit, and then we'd go and write and improvise and work out, and then come back and shoot more. That improv element, did you gain all that experience from theatre? Yeah. It's one of the joys of doing it, because you're doing the same show again and again and again and again. If there wasn't things happening with the audience that were different each night, it would be unbearable. We did Jeeves and Worcester in the West End a few years ago, and at one point I throw a hat to someone in the second row, and, you know, it's a surprise, they don't know it's coming. And on the second day, I threw the hat down, and I didn't know the guy was holding a massive tumbler of red wine, which he threw all over the woman <laughs> who no. sat next to him in a white felt beret oh, no. and a white shirt. No! So what you did, oh. did you write to her, say sorry? What do you do? Uh, no, I never saw her again. Do you want to take this opportunity to say sorry? What? I'm really sorry. Yeah. And the other big massive bit, episodes. Yeah. The idea you've come up with a successful British sitcom and, and you'll take it to the States. We filmed it all in, in London. So not filmed any of it in the States? No. Well. So uh, Matt's Malibu beachfront house was in Mill Hill in North <laughs> London. Las Vegas was Camden Town. No way. <laughs> the mansion we lived in with all the palm trees was in Surrey, which is a shame, really, because I was looking forward to going to LA. Yeah, yeah. And for you, what bit came first, the, the writing side of comedy or the acting side? Well, of... the acting stuff, really. I mean, yeah. I, uh, I always wanted to be an actor. It just was never something that was even on the cards. My dad was a builder, my yeah. mum was a barmaid. It wasn't something that anyone in our family had done. You might as well want to be Pope or an astronaut or something. And do you ever employ your skills at home when it comes to bedtime stories? I mean, I recorded a lot of audiobooks of fairy stories. And I had a cardboard cutout <laughs> from a job I did a few years ago. And occasionally I put the cardboard cutout in the kid's bedroom, press play <laughs> on an audiobook, you... and then back out of the room slowly. No, that... <laughs> so in Frank, my middle one, until he's about six, he thought every story started with. Read by Stephen Mank. <laughs> I love that. But wouldn't every dad love a cardboard cutout of themselves just to press the tape back out? Do you ever cook with them? I don't cook a lot. I'll throw fish fingers in the oven. Yeah. Um, I'll make pancakes on a weekend morning. Right. I can't claim I'm a hero in the kitchen. Well, I'll tell you what, are you hungry? Very. Because I've got something you can definitely make with your kids, homemade ravioli. You're going to love this one. Guys, you hungry? Yeah! All right, let's get cooking. To get you lot all feasting this weekend, I'm cooking up the perfect treat. Time to do something incredible that you're going to love, something a bit special. We're going to make homemade ravioli with smashed potato, sweet onions, radicchio, fontina cheese and parmesan. Little edible parcels that people are going to go mad for. So it all starts with the filling. And this filling is a different one, right? It's actually a potato filling. Take two potatoes, give them a little stab up with a fork, and then we're going to throw them straight into the oven at about 200 degrees Celsius for about an hour. And then the rest of the filling is super, super simple. Take a red onion, cut those into quarters with some radicchio. It's an Italian salad leaf. Uh, it's bitter and crunchy. I want to season this with salt, pepper, nice extra virgin olive oil, and a generous drizzle of balsamic vinegar. We've got some lovely thyme here and that's going to be amazing. Get some greaseproof paper, tuck that up into bed. So, let that roast away for about 40 minutes to an hour, and then both of them will be raring to go. But of course, to wrap that filling, we need the pasta. So, in a bowl, add 400 grams of pasta flour, and then in there, about 70 grams of semolina. And then we're going to use 12 egg yolks. So what we get is pasta that is silky. I mean, look, the point of making your own pasta is to do something exceptional, something extraordinary. So the last one goes in, happy days. Add a little bit of water, and you can add just a little bit of oil, and then we'll use a fork to start off with. You want it tacky, but not sticky. 
Uh, you want it pliable and malleable, but you know, not hard. If it's too hard, add some water. If it's too wet and sticky, add some flour. Easy. Now that we've got a nice little texture in this bowl, let's knead it. So you've got your weight into it, push it away, bring it back. There's no real right or wrong way to do it. Once you've done that for about five minutes, what you'll have is an amazingly silky elastic dough. And if you touch it, you can see it bouncing back. So what we need to do is now let it relax. So cover it in a damp cloth or a little bit of cling film. So wrap it up like that. That'll be ready in about half an hour, 40 minutes. And then we can make ravioli. Once cooked, take the fillings out of the oven, finely chop the radicchio and onion, and scoop out the potato from their skins. And then cheese is going to be what kind of makes this sort of holy trinity of flavors. So I'm using Parmesan, but I'm also using Fontina. But the nice thing about this is you can use any cheese you can get your hands on, as long as it melts nicely and it tastes delicious. Mix it all together and season to perfection. Take chunks about this big. Just roll them into little balls. And of course, the size of your ball will control the size of your ravioli. So now for the exciting bit. It's very, very simple. I use the pasta machine, and I think that is much, much easier and more consistent. So for the first couple of goes, go onto the widest setting, roll it through, fold it in half, and lightly flour it. And then each time we run it through, we'll go down a notch. So every time you take it down a notch, you're making the pasta sheet thinner and thinner. There is a lovely sheet of pasta. Right, let's lay it out and just put a little bit of water in there. Take our filling and just lay it about two centimetres away from the edge. And then once we've done that, just flop it over like this. And it's quite malleable. Use your fingers, not your fingernails. You don't want to cut through the pasta. Use the little curve of your finger to just, you know, slowly hug around that ravioli and go from one side to the other. And then we use our cutter or our knife to just clean up the edge all the way along the length, in between the gaps. And here is your homemade ravioli. That, my friends, is a thing of beauty. We're going to put this into boiling water for about two and a half minutes. We'll season that water with salt. Now, while that's cooking, what I want to do is toast off some hazelnuts on a medium heat, right? I'll put them into a pestle and mortar. Just pound up half of the nuts to a powder and then just crack some. Then I'll go into the pan with a little olive oil and then some thyme. Then I want to take just a little bit of butter. I'm going to take those delicate ravioli and a little bit of the water into the pan. And the water and the butter will emulsify. Let's plate it up. And you can see how delicate that pasta is. Look at that. Put some of that lovely butter around the plate. Get some of those hazelnuts. And then, a bit of Parmesan. And that, my friends, is a ravioli worth savouring. So let's get in there. Oh, my lord. Flavour explosion. The feel of that fresh pasta is like nothing else. It is so silky. And the flavour you get when you first put it in your mouth is that thyme, butter, and hazelnut. So it's quite light and tangy. But then when you bite into that dark middle, it's bassy. It's bitter, sweet, like gorgeous cheese. They are the silkiest, smoothest little mouthfuls of joy that you're ever going to eat.